we come through just like most organizations, uh, the climate, I want to say climate, uh, the economic uh, downshifting, uh, I think that have hit all of us worldwide that we're facing. And uh, we've had to make some changes, but in that changing, uh, of what I call transitioning, uh, one writer said, every 50 years organization transition. And I think it's been good. It's been good for the organization, but good for PNBC. And I see a whole new shift of uh, direction, uh, new life, revitalizing excitement uh, is in the air. We've been able to uh, bring on a different uh, set of vision and ministries uh, that our people across the nation uh, engaged in and the world globally. Uh, such as uh, one of the initiatives that we brought in when we brought, came into office was how to uh, minister to uh, our veterans or soldiers that's returning from the battlefield, uh, from the wars, because that's something going to be with us, uh, I think, for 20, 30 years uh, in the future. And the reason that that stayed with me is because back in uh, the spring of 2010, I was on a special trip with the Ford Foundation to Vietnam and looking at the damage, uh, the effects of war, uh, the effects of Agent Orange upon the country and the generations that's left even after the war is over. And, to start, uh, and I went into prayer on that and the Lord said we need to prepare for the future for those families uh, that's gonna feel the trauma uh, of these wars long after uh, they come home from Iraq and Afghanistan. The global mandate is greater than ever before. Um, being a missionary, and I describe myself as being a missionary because I am a missionary, one who's gone on 66 uh, mission trips. Uh, the world is closer than ever because the global travel is easier. Uh, and so uh, you cannot be isolated in one of the segments of society or the world. And so what happens in, uh, for example, in, in, in Russia or, or China also affects us here. And so we have to be connected and interconnected with each other even uh, in secular issues of society and also uh, religious issues of society. We must understand each other uh, or, or we will not exist uh, in the future. What we must do now is to remember that since in our roots there are these people living and dead who fought and bled, died in order that we might have integration in society. I think we still need uh, integration. If we, are, if we are pushed aside and we become isolated from the general society, then we set ourselves up for genocide. We also set ourselves up for being shortchanged when it comes to education. If black people rejected people, denied people, historically denied, are segregated, then it means everything that they attend will be inferior except their own private institutions. Uh, our churches are not inferior to any, uh, not in terms of n numbers or finances or missions or anything. But what about the schools? The schools depend upon state and federal funding. So it's very easy in a, in a system that is determined by political districts and imbalances, deliberately drawn lines of, for congressional representation, which shortchanges us. It's part of the community, it's part of its mission. Its mission is to bring about total change. And you can't have total change if you don't have the franchise, if you don't have voice in Lansing and in Washington, as monies are being allocated for this district and for that district. Why is it that Benton Harbor, Pontiac, and Detroit are going down and other areas are flourishing? It's because education is not integrated. Even though we were fighting for it, we haven't achieved it yet. Uh, 
I'm very proud of our, our cutting edge uh, voice when it comes to prophetic issues. We've been, uh, we have always stood very strong when it comes to being prophetic. Uh, uh, such as in the past apartheid, speaking out against apartheid and, and we still need to speak out against injustices that we see today but I see other kinds of injustices that's creeping up uh, on the radar now such as environmental issues uh, that's affecting not just our people, but it's affecting our people in larger proportions than others. I think that the most unique aspect of the Progressive National Baptist Convention is its guts, its, its courage, its willingness to stand up and speak truth to power no matter how powerful that power may be and to say we must have equal education opportunity in America. We must have equal employment practices in America. We must have sustainability in every nation, in, ev in every city, in every, school, in every school district. We must have jobs for all Americans. Here we're talking about taxes, we don't even have jobs. The argument ought to be for more jobs. The money ought to be creating more jobs. It ought to be encouraging people who have good ideas that will bring about jobs. But that isn't happening. Uh, when the banks were rescued, they should have been committed, they should have been made to commit to investing that money in our neighborhoods where there are no jobs.